you're talking about ominous. You see the biggest money in the world. Do they think that we've reached a peak? Is it misdirection where they're not really coming out and saying, hey, we've reached a peak. Instead, they're just reining things in. They're, they're tightening up their, their credit lines. They're, they're protecting themselves for a run on the system. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. For fastest service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We have a returning guest. Andy Schechtman is the CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. He joins us for this weekly market update this Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. Andy, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Good to be here, Dunn again. Our guests always appreciate these quick weekly market updates. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, we look for an insight into what's going on inside the supply chain of the gold and silver retail investment market, as well as your big picture view of what's happening in the broader economy and financial world. And we always look for a weekly special when we can get one of uh, especially low uh, prices or special availability of a rare or otherwise uh, difficult to obtain uh, item for our viewers. So looking for all of that today in rapid succession, we'd like to kick it off with an interesting question from one of our viewers. We have uh, Eric Hoffner who says, ask Andy to bring down those premiums since the price of silver is not going up. Could you please talk to us about what is going on with premiums and what it has to do with the price of silver, if anything? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously you would think that uh, what he's saying would make sense. Uh, and, and to a degree, it does. Those premiums are really not dictated or controlled by the retail industry like Miles Franklin or any of the other retail companies. Quite to the contrary, it's, 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 uh, it's a market phenomenon. And, you know, it goes both ways. Uh, we will bid. Right now, our bid price is somewhere in the neighborhood of $7 on the price of sil- over the price of spot on Silver Eagles bid. So when we talk about uh, bid prices and ask prices and high premiums. Remember, it goes both ways, but it's a function of not just demand here. It, it's a global situation. Getting product doesn't just emanate here in, in the United States. We have to get product from all around the globe, and we're competing in a global market. So uh, I will say this. Premiums are coming down right now, and it's not um, because silver has gone down. It's because gold and silver haven't done much of anything over the last couple of months. It's a lull. It's quiet. Uh, and as that happens, you get a little bit of waning of interest. And as that happens, I believe you find opportunity. And if you look around, indeed, premiums have come down. I don't expect it to be a long lasting phenomenon. However, uh, I expect premiums to head right back up in earnest as soon as we see prices move back up. And, um, it's an ebb and flow type of situation done again. It's, it's ebb and flow. And, and we've seen this over the last couple of years, uh, last 18 months where in general, it's characterized by much higher premiums, but there were two or three periods where premiums come, have come down and as quickly as they come down, they move back up. I guess all I'm simply trying to say with all of this is that premiums have a life to their own and supply and demand are a, a funny thing these days with, a somewhat fractured supply chain and interest that can flip on a dime. One day the demand is off the charts and the next day it's quiet. Uh, But in general, I guess I would simply say two things. One, premiums have come back down a little bit. Uh, And number two, I don't expect them to stay where they are because getting product hasn't really become any easier. Uh, And we're not seeing any selling in the secondary market, virtually none whatsoever. So, take advantage of these premiums that have melted a little bit in the summer heat as an opportunity. Uh, Because typically as we get towards Labor Day and interest starts to pick up again, uh, I would expect, um, especially as we get towards the end of the year, premiums to head right back up in earnest. There's another related question here. Uh, from Neil Curry, who says, Hey, Andy, suppressed precious metals prices greatly assist the Federal Reserve and the Federal Treasury in promoting their narrative of, quote, all is well, 
and officials in both of those places can back up the truck and greatly benefit personally by loading up on physical precious metals at those prices plus all the mining stocks they please what incentive is there for them to end the price suppression well and i've i've said that for a long time that what is the reason price is being held back and i would argue both obviously it it makes uh, the situation look better than it is economically but it has also enabled large money interests to gobble up physical supply look at the almost 200 or over 200 million ounces of silver delivered year to date off of comex that's that beats last year's pace which was a record year um the biggest money in the world is using the suppressed price of metals to accumulate copious amounts of it and and maybe this is why you don't see uh countries like china putting up a big fuss about why uh, the price has uh, not behaved the way uh, we would expect it to behave, that logic would dictate. So much of this is counterintuitive to what we would expect to happen. And ultimately, I think logic will prevail. But in the meantime, those interests that are trying to accumulate it are the ones certainly benefiting the most by suppressing the paper price um, uh, with, with COMEX futures contracts. So uh, it, it's He's right. And uh, what will what will incentivize it to stop? The only way you can successfully manipulate a market over time is to push it in the direction that it is going. And what I see happening is a shift away from the COMEX and the London Metals Exchange and their crooked uh, price setting uh, mechanism. Uh, once it gets to a point where there's no bid, where no one wants to release any of the metal they have at these make-believe prices, it'll move towards an area where uh, price setting and, and price discovery are more reflective of, of real supply and real demand. We're not there yet. But I think that's one of the things that we will see, that a world growing tired of the Western manipulation. And if you told me that the Shanghai Gold Exchange or, uh, or a culmination of uh, the Shanghai Gold Exchange of something more like... Uh, the exchange in, in the United Arab Emirates or wherever it is in a, in a region that respects what gold stands for. Uh, I think we will see a shift away from the paper-driven uh, synthetic market price to one that is a, a reflection of reality. And, and when that happens, it'll be, it, it'll be something to see because, quite frankly, the price should be markedly higher. We all know that. But this is why it's an opportunity. You have to be able to see that, trust your intuition and your gut, and and acquire it at these subsidized prices with a smile, just like the biggest money in the world is doing. And, and that's the thing. You know, it's easy for me to say that, to justify things, but I believe it in my soul, in my heart, that the biggest money in the world has been using the paper price for a long time to misdirect the public. It's a constant theme you and I have talked about, Dunnigan, and I believe it to be true that this is a long game, and this is a, a high-stakes game, and one that requires time and patience and preparation and positioning. And that's what the biggest money has been doing, really, for the last four years. It's the central theme of my presentation uh, at the Sprout Show that you and I will, or excuse me, the Rule Symposium Show now that you and I will be at later this week. And uh, I, I believe it to my soul that price is a tool of misdirection. And you can only successfully manipulate a market over an extended period of time by pushing it in the direction that it is going, because this is a global phenomenon. It's not just centered here in the States. And uh, heaven forbid things get worse. I think you real quickly, premiums will rise and people will understand the importance of, of owning precious metals. When you were speaking about this uh, misdirection and misinformation and how it can cloud our view of what's real so that we make the right decisions for our best interest because we're living in an environment that is not looking out for our best interests, not even a level playing field. It reminds me of when we interviewed recently Jim Rawls from survivalblog.com and he talked about we are living in the age of deception and betrayal. He said, you know, plan accordingly, relocate accordingly, invest accordingly. and my wife and I were reflecting on that recently because we've been affected by so many things in our in the most recent uh, year and a half or so here has revealed maybe something that was already going on, but we just got it we got to see it kind of in its in its uh, true colors in the last year here, and that's that our whether it's political leaders, whether it's our media, 
telling us, you know, the version of the truth, whether it's our medical leaders, whether it's our, our uh, educational, whether it's in any area of our life, financial, that's what we're talking about, is it's almost like we used to belong to a group where they talked about uh, living in certain situations is like living behind enemy lines where you, you really truly feel that the, the ones that are calling the shots, the ones that are putting out the actual official narrative of what's going on, do not have your best interest at heart. So you're actually having, having to look for, uh, look out for yourself, look out for your family, look out for your future, but you're doing it based on information that's to a majority extent and, and all your family members and friends and neighbors are being bombarded constantly as are you with this misinformation. So very, very challenging environment, emotionally stressful to try to figure out how you're going to thread your way forward in life to a place that's going to be safe for you and your family uh, in all those aspects. Uh, against that tide, against that current that's coming at you. So uh, in the light of that, can you talk to us for a moment about, I mean, that's what we're seeing about people grabbing on to real things. You know, they, maybe they can't trust what we're being told about, oh yeah, but best economy ever. That's why the market's at all time highs, but at least they can, they can trust that they can hold on to something that's real. Um, you've talked to us about that before. Trust your gut, trust what's real. Um, just wondering if there's any insight about how we move forward uh, in an environment which is set against us, where the, the cards are stacked against us and where we can't just trust the information that we're being fed. Well, yeah, and a case in point in that is, uh, you know, if you look at the reverse repo market and what Wells Fargo did right now, I mean, talk about ominous. You have the biggest banks in the world uh, that are, A, closing off their, their lines of credit, uh, you have the biggest banks in the world that are flooding the reverse repo market, wanting to give the, the Fed their money at five basis points instead of lending it out into the economy at 100 times return over that five basis points, 5%. Uh, you're talking about ominous. You see the biggest money in the world. Do they think that we've reached a peak? Is it misdirection where they're not really coming out and saying, hey, we've reached a peak. Instead, they're just reining things in. They're They're tightening up their their credit lines, they're, they're protecting themselves for a run on the system. Um, so yeah, I think the way that you get ahead in that environment is to A, pay yourself first, always pay yourself first, no matter what, even if you have a, a mountain of bills, find a way to pull something off and pay yourself first, no matter what, save um, and, and invest in yourself first and foremost. That's easy to say, but I mean it. It's the only way to get ahead is to pay yourself first. And we've talked about how I've been buying something. Uh, you know, this just came in yesterday. I bought some platinum and some and a couple some silver and a couple twenty dollar gold pieces. I bought these and I buy something every two weeks. Done again. I always have for thirty one years. I never ever ever miss a period of time. That's how you get ahead. Period. Because it's easy to get wrapped up in in the day to day and you don't take care of yourself and you wake up one day and you're getting closer and closer to retirement. Life's like a roll of toilet paper. You know, it. when you're young, you don't notice it. As you get older, it starts to spin faster and you realize that you're getting to the end. And if you don't save and pay yourself for starting young, uh, as young as possible, um, time catches up with us. So in a world where the cards are stacked against us, where where big money is misdirecting us, where big money is showing us their hand, but not telling us. You have to really look hard and try to figure this stuff out. And God bless people like yourself who have been out there showing us um, for a long time uh, the truth, which is harder to find. Um, you know, people don't have that energy. A lot of people are just trying to keep their head above water. But if I could give anyone any advice, the one thing that has allowed me to get ahead in life is to pay myself first every two weeks. Always invest in yourself and your family first with a little bit of savings, whether it's one ounce of silver or or, or bigger. Start somewhere and start every two weeks and get on a, a repetitive pattern and put it away. Because remember, I'm not talking about any of this stuff as being an investment. It's, it's wealth. It's wealth I hope I never need to use. And if I do, I'm darn glad I have it. And if not, whether it be an emergency, or an opportunity, um, you know, you'll have it. And, and, and as a side note to that, by looking at what the banks are doing, uh, to me that reeks of uh, almost like they are preparing for something, but 
when that something happens, you know, Rick Rule often talks about keeping powder dry, to have the courage and the tools to take advantage of great opportunities. When you look at stocks and bonds and real estate, then again, at all time highs in this environment, uh, I think when there is a correction, it will be a substantial one and there will be opportunities to be found. Uh, people who have uh, precious metals certainly will, I think, be in a greater position to take advantage of those opportunities as uh, as things start to normalize and, and go back to uh, to a, a hopefully to a, a a place where we can actually find real price discovery. Uh, and you know you can see this kind of volatility in like in the lumber market. Uh, in the cryptocurrency market where we've seen great corrections. And one other thing I'd like to mention about cryptocurrencies, ultimately, I think there's a place for them. But I've been thinking a lot about them lately, and they are so tied right now to Wall Street. Uh, if you look at all of the massive investment by these large Wall Street firms that are investing in cryptocurrencies, if, if Wall Street takes it on the chin, I wonder what will happen initially anyway to cryptocurrencies. Everything is so systemically tied together. And this is one of the reasons to have precious metals, that you have a little bit of a respite or a little island, if you will, outside of everything that seems so interconnected these days. So pay yourself first and look at your precious metals as wealth, as dry powder, not as an investment. And it's easier to, to deal with these ups and downs and look at them with a smile when we see the um, the, 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 the prices that, that come down in a very counterintuitive manner because in the end, logic will prevail and you only win by paying yourself first. That's the biggest advice I could give someone. Every two weeks, get on a period. Every week, every month, whatever it is, get on a, period, uh, on a, on a program and buy when you can, as much as you can or as little. Just get something. You've uh, whetted our appetite for a weekly special here, I think, because people who want to take a step and they've been taking steps or maybe this is the first time for them want to know what we can do to help them out in that regards so yeah we we've been able we were fortunate enough to secure an awful lot of the 20 dollars gold pieces that we've talked about They're, we're getting closer to the end of the extra fine and we're still going to offer those at 129 i am going to throw in a little curveball here you know we've talked a lot about lately also um building our new website, which is, is showing remarkable progress. We're still a little ways away where we could see these things in real time. But I'd also like to mention and, and uh, that when we bought these $20 gold pieces and extra fine, we bought a whole bunch of other things too. It's a very, very large estate, uh, $5 gold coins, $10 gold coins. Some are certified, some are lower grade. So if you call, in and ask about the extra fine $20 gold pieces at $129. Don't be afraid to ask your broker or whoever you talk to about all of the other numismatic specials that we have, where we will not be undersold, where there's amazing deals. Now, the $129 over spot on the extra fine $20 gold pieces is as good as you'll find anywhere. But if you're looking for certified coins, if you're looking for $5 liberties, if you're looking for St. Gaudens, $10 Indians, $5 Indians. We bought a lot of these and we have them and our prices will, will really, uh, I think, be the finest in the industry. So I wanted to throw that curveball in there. We'll require a little bit of research, uh, a little bit of a discussion, but you won't be sorry uh, if you call for those. Uh, the second special, we're going to run them and throw another curveball on that one on, as well, will be bags of pre-1965 uh, junk silver. U.S. constitutional silver. And uh, I, I think, you know, from a standpoint of utility in a world where that is, is something that uh, I think you could argue would be very important, perhaps if things really were to get bad, the, the, the um, utility you get for pre-65 silver is the best out there, period. Uh, so we're going to offer bags of those right now at 495 over spot, I believe, uh, which uh, Donegan and I uh, were, were checking out and looks to be the best price in the country. So here again, bringing specials just for the sake of bringing them isn't what we're trying to do. We're trying to actually offer something, a special price. Uh, and curveball, uh, I do believe that I have secured at least five bags of brilliant uncirculated uh, Roosevelt dimes. Now, this is something I never ever, ever see. Uh, 
Rarely do I see full bags of uncirculated pre-65 silver. It'll blow you away what an uncirculated coin looks like instead of pre-65 normal wear and tear. They're very cool. Uh, and those are going to be $7.99 over the price of silver here. Again, I don't think you'd find that a better price anywhere in the country. So uh, you're talking a bag that uh, in rolls that um, has never never been circulated into the public, uh, five of those. So special deal on those as well. But uh, moral of the story is simply this. If, if you're looking for something, we'll find it, and we'll do the best to offer the best price in the country. But as it pertains to pre-65 junk and as it pertains to pre-33 gold, I'd like to think right now the specials we are offering and the other things that we have behind the curtain uh, will be as good of a value uh, and appropriate timing uh, as we've offered all year. So uh, lots of cool stuff here for this week's special done again and um, appreciate the opportunity to offer them to your listeners. Well, Andy, our listeners always appreciate these specials, and we do get a lot of uh, calls about that because they know value when they see it and uh, always know that they can trust the integrity of the of the supply that they're going to get from us. Um, we have one more question. As long as you're throwing curveballs right and left, I got one for you. This one's a curveball. Uh, Belly Dance Rabia R says, Chris is doing a silver fest in Mexico. Greg Manorino threw a party on July 4th in Las Vegas. Rob partying in Texas. Does Rick or Andy intend to do anything for Floridians? Or are we going to be left behind again? <laughs> well, I plan on going to Chris's show in Mexico. I've promised him that. Uh, it'll be nice to uh, to get out and, and mingle with people again in this industry. Uh, Rick's show, as everyone knows here by now, I would think is online virtual again. Normally that's in Vancouver. I've been doing that show for 15 plus years. Even before Rick uh, and Sprott had it, it was the Agora show. Uh, it's my favorite show of the year by far. Uh, being in Vancouver, such a lovely city, maybe my favorite in North America, uh, is also fun. Uh, two years in a row now here, we're virtual. Um, let me put it to you this way. That's a really good point. Make sure um, uh, not only this viewer, but anyone who wants to, this, it's this week. It's this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's 100% online. You can just sign up. There's a link in the description of this video. I didn't even think of that to, to mention that. That's absolutely true. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can get in on the 2021 Natural Resource Symposium with Rick Rule and Doug Casey and Daniel DiBartino Booth and Tony Prinz and Jim Rickards and a ton of CEOs. And Andy's going to be there. I'm going to be there. So that's that's a really good point. Yeah, and I'd love to do something in Florida. You know, one of the things that we were doing a few years ago, long before COVID, was were these smaller gatherings, these smaller meetings in various cities around the country. So now that I'm settled here, yeah, stranger things have happened. You never know, but uh, I'd love to do it, to be honest with you. And, you know, for those people out there here in Florida, if you have some investment clubs or gatherings uh, that you're already going to uh, reach out to me at Andy at Miles Franklin. I'd be happy to come and speak at these engagements and maybe I can twist uh, Dunnigan's arm to fly down here and join me. That would be great. But uh, it's something that, that I really, truly love doing and meeting people in person. It's getting tiring as much as it is nice to see you at all. Uh, it, it's getting tiring speaking to you and others over, over a, you know, a computer screen here and, uh, instead of face to face, something that I really like to do. So if you're here in Florida, especially on the east east coast of Florida, and you're looking for someone to come chat to an investment club or a group, yeah, send me an email. I'd love to do it. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, the Rule Symposium. It's the best of the year of all of the shows that I intend. The quality of the speakers, uh, the quality of the presentation is is as good as it gets. So uh, hopefully we'll see some people there. And you know. The platform, this hop-in platform, uh, is is really very uh, user-friendly, and it's it's also uh, very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, it offers a great platform for 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 back and forth uh, conversation. It's uh, uh, user-friendly, and it it uh, it's a good way to come in and chat face to face, ask questions, and. Uh, I think it's uh, a lot easier than people would think to actually have a um, 
a back and forth discussion with with people presenting. And it's a neat program. Well, Andy Sheckman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals, we got to wrap because it's a quick market update. And I appreciate your being here always with us, guys. Remember, if you want to not miss any specials, it's Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, every week. We're here for you, and uh, those things do sell out quickly, so don't hesitate. I said that last week, and I had to spend the last half of this last week telling people, yeah, the $10 liberties are gone. Yeah, the $10 liberties are gone. So anyway, uh, always grateful for your presence here with us. Andy, thanks for joining us again. And I'm grateful to be here as well. You have a great rest of your week. We'll see you on Thursday at the symposium, and uh, everyone else will see you next week. Take care. Take care. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Zero complaints, licensed and bonded. For physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin. Satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, Service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs. 